everyone hits a bump in the road. What do you do with it? Be inspired as we explore the ways people experience, navigate, and manage the ups and downs and twists and turns in this road trip called life. Barbara Bentry is a professional musician and music producer and an award-winning documentary filmmaker. But COVID-19 has just about shut down the music and film industries. Today, we talk about this bump in the road and what it means to this independent filmmaker. Barbara, welcome. If you would, for our audience, give them a little bit of background um, on yourself. Well, thanks for inviting me, Pat. Um, I was raised in rural Minnesota, which I think is a big part of who I am. Um, It was a childhood that was really deeply immersed in nature. And for the time period, um, generally unsupervised, you know, just sort of a lot of time to be out roaming around the neighborhood, making our own fun. And um, during the time that I was in Minnesota, this very small town, um, I was very involved in music in high school and, and really did a lot of performing and everything. And that led to me pursuing a degree in music education in college. And then um, I started teaching, but I always had one foot in performing too. I was doing a lot of musical theater and singing with bands and and basically working as a professional musician. Um, and then I started getting some jobs in TV and movies because I had this background in music education and had done a lot of teaching. I started working with kids in television and movies and uh, probably my most notable credit was that I was a music producer on the Mickey Mouse Club TV show, and I chose um, some very famous, <laughs> now very famous young people like Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake and Ryan Gosling and Carrie Russell, on and on, just all these incredibly talented kids. And, um, and then in watching people in production, I thought, you know, I really want to do that, and I think I could do that. Um, I'm basically now a filmmaker and I'm a self-taught filmmaker. I taught myself how to edit and I also just really observed others in these production situations and I hired great crew, which I learned a lot from and I've watched a lot of movies. (laughs) So I'm basically a self-taught filmmaker. I did take a few classes uh, just to fill in some blanks on equipment and things like that. But now I'm on my uh, third documentary feature film. And um, we've been in a lot of film festivals. The current film that I'm working on is Dave Grusin, Not Enough Time. And um, it's just been a wonderful experience and um, really changed my life from being first a performing musician to a music educator to a music producer and now a filmmaker. How has COVID um, impacted all this? Well, basically, it's uh, it's my bump in the road, shall we speak? Uh, you know, shall we say? Um, you know, production everywhere is just completely shut down because um, movie and film uh, and television production uh, is a very intimate profession. You know, it's really messy and it's really there are very few boundaries, you know, everyone's very close to each other. You're handling equipment and passing things around. And um, it's just put a complete standstill. I mean, there's absolutely nothing happening in production right now. And um, how it has impacted us is that we're in the middle of our third documentary film. And basically it's gone on hiatus because the funds have, dried up and you just can't do the work and be close to people. Um, so it's a really interesting time. You know, there there are a lot of um, new union recommendations that are coming out daily about how you could go into production again, but it would be incredibly different. I mean, like not having production offices and having people working at home as much as possible, not sharing scripts, not you know, having food out on tables for people. Um, They've even talked about having plastic partitions between actors 
that you would have in place during the entire setup and everything, and then just remove them at the last second before the cameras start rolling. It just sounds incredibly challenging and testing everyone every day um, on set. I've even heard about entire productions going into two week quarantines and maybe going off on location and being sequestered in a hotel together. So you can't have any contact with the outside world, so to speak. So it's, it's a very, very interesting time, you know, and very challenging time for people. And then of course we're professional musicians too, my husband and I that work together. So the music world has just completely shut down. I mean, there are, you know, projections that people may not feel comfortable going to see a concert or being in live music for a year or more, you know, so people are, I mean, Broadway is completely shut down. This is going to have a huge impact just on the entire creative process. Don't you think? I mean, I I, I can't even imagine how one can, retain that kind of interactive creativity that's necessary to create a a film or a concert. Yeah. And I think more than that, um, just people's level of trust, you know, even if there's a vaccine, I think it's going to take a while before people feel that level of trust and certainly transportation. I mean, flying, you know, hotels, it's just, it's a very, very, it's a very travel dependent industry as well. Uh, so it's, it's going to create a lot of problems and <clears throat> how it'll manifest probably in production is that films are going to get really small, you know, like it'll be intimate two people kind of films and not the, you know, 400 extras that you have in the background and, and all of that stuff. I mean, even costume fittings, you know, all, everything is just very, very intimate in the business. And, um, So, yeah, you're going to see a change. It probably, you know, things are finishing up in production, in post-production now that we're in production last year. So it probably won't really manifest for another year or so, but then you're going to see a dramatic shift in what is produced and by who. I I think you're seeing a lot of shifts in the industry in general. I know um, you, you talk a little bit about some of your experience with distribution and how that part of the industry is changing. Yeah. um, I mean, theaters, I think, are going to have a hard time recovering from this. You know, all of a sudden, everyone has their home theaters now, and we're all getting very comfortable with streaming and um, watching in our homes. And I think it's going to take a lot to get people back out into theaters. Um, and, and maybe I'm extra paranoid because I've also talked to other filmmakers who say, you know, no, as long as there's a seat between me and I wear a mask, that it won't be that big a deal. But I don't know. It's it's become very easy to see films at home. And I'm not sure if the average person outside of the filmmaking industry really cares about screen and audio quality to the same degree that filmmakers do. You know, I see people watching films on their their iPhone, you know, so. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, once you start letting that be your norm, you know, then it almost, you know, it, in this entire virus epidemic, it's always, you know, the reward versus the risk. So. Um, With I incomplete think- information. Right, right, right. So it's going to be a very interesting time. But I think there's also incredible opportunity too. you know, for us, um, it is leading us to think in ways that we hadn't before. For example, um, we're actually considering an Oscar run now for our film because there's been this complete change in the rules as to how to qualify and the whole um, really political process of getting a film nominated and and for an award is been based on a lot of parties and gifts and things that are just kind of off the table now. So 
a little film company like us might actually have a shot that we wouldn't have had before. We don't have to rent a theater in New York or Los Angeles for a week, which is incredibly expensive. And like I said, sponsor parties and do all these things that you do to, you know, politically sort of position yourself. So that's been an interesting thing like, hmm, hmm, maybe we'll we'll try that. And then it's even gone so far as um, – we're right now contemplating buying an RV, which I would have never in a million years ever thought would be in my future. That just was not something that seemed like it would be interesting to me. I was part of the camping trip we went on last week to sort of try it out and be out in the woods and all that. And we really loved it. And we thought, wow, what if we could do this at a luxury level, you know, and have it be something that maybe we can do production on the road and um, what kinds of productions would we do on the road and out in nature, which has always been a big um, part of our mission as a company. We're, we're very invested in doing inspirational, you know, films that uplift and uh, change people's perceptions specifically about women and about the environment and nature. So, it's kind of like, wow, this could be really interesting to sort of go on the road a bit with production and have it be very self-contained, do our editing in the film, um, for the film, in the RV, things like in music production and, you know, kind of create a little space pod <laughs> that you <laughs> drive around in and make movies, you know. So, um, again, you know, there's opportunity in every setback. I, I personally am thinking of this as the grand pause and um, it's not all bad. You know, I think, I think we're having some opportunities to really stop and assess, you know, what is important in life, you know, health has <laughs> moved to number one, <laughs> not that it wasn't always, but you know, family, friends, simple pleasures, you know, I, I think that's been really um, a shift in focus for sure. Oh, I think it's been a shift for all of us. I find the RV adventure to be very intriguing. I've, I've toyed <laughs> with that too, actually. And um, with your musical background, where do you think that adventure might take you? Well, here's something that I just thought of. I think it was in the shower <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> but we had this concept for a show called Jazz Directions that we would go looking for jazz all over the country and eventually all over the world because it's it's a a style of music that is challenged you know um it, it, to find its audience and everything and we are jazz musicians well all of a sudden i thought well what if jazz directions is us traveling around in this rv and doing little impromptu concerts for people <laughs> Well, maybe, concerts and maybe, interviews yeah and maybe out in the woods even you know like pull into an rv place and say jazz concert tonight you know or, or you <laughs> and, park um, outside of new orleans and invite yeah. people out for an interview right celebrities you know things like that so who are all very hungry to have some <laughs> sort of you know visibility right now so yeah it's like that's something i would have never thought about and then i've had all sorts of other ideas about um you know, just uh, maybe taking people with me for a period of time. We know some interesting, um, wise women and maybe going on the road and just having a conversation while you're driving and traveling around. And I don't know, just really, again, you have to be creative during this time and um, it's stimulating a lot of new ideas. I think that's incredibly cool. And I think the idea of travel always um, generates enthusiasm and new ideas. Well, I know you know about that for sure <laughs> with your whole cancer road trip. So, yeah, I think travel is um, something that is important and um, revealing and stimulating. You know, uh, this recent trip that we took to go camping, there's just I love just looking down a long road, you know, getting off the screen in front of me and just seeing, focusing your eyes a long distance. In fact, I know there's a physiological thing that happens to you when your irises in your eye are focused a long distance away. 
how that internalizes in your body is you know there's space around you and so you relax more than when you're in this highly stimulated visual world that we're in with our phones and our computers and everything so yeah it's good for you I think time on the road allows you to both reflect and experience. It's very experiential. You have new smells, new new vistas. Um, I've I have really come to see life um, as a road trip. Yeah, I do too. And it's very improvisatory. So for us as jazz musicians, it's like you wake up and you say, "Well, what's going to happen today?" You know, best laid plans sometimes always change, but in that is often something really beautiful too. What um uh, the opportunity to potentially submit your Dave Grusin um film to the Oscars is really cool. What are some of your other plans for that film? Well, we um <laughs> we're again looking at non-traditional routes for distribution. Um in fact, we are exploring the idea of just releasing it on our own as opposed to through a major distributor because we're convinced that there's an audience for this film out there. It's just a matter of spreading the word. And so we also need to pay back our investors and everything. And, and doing it on our own is actually a higher revenue stream than if we were to go through a large distributor because they have a lot of costs. And um, it's, you know, again, and one of the things about the Oscars is that you either go into it with a huge company behind you and just put a lot of money and everything into a campaign, or you can go into it as the underdog (laughs) (laughs) and either one of those will work. And I think, well, we're definitely an underdog, (laughs) you know, (laughs) tiny little, little company like ours. So, um, and the subject of our film, Dave Grusin is really loved within the industry. So, um, and certainly that would be a major boost for our distribution. You know, if we were nominated for an Oscar, that would be, again, that's not something I was had in our long-term plan or, and, and it really was brought to me by someone else saying, you know, you should think about this. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> you know, you may be a tiny company, but that film has won so many awards. Yes, we've been in a lot of festivals and almost every festival we've won something and that has been incredibly gratifying and surprising um, because we didn't make it with the sense of trying to make an award-winning film. We made it really, it was a complete passion project and just really wanting it to have integrity as a historical document and also a tribute to this incredible person Dave Grusin, and also to have musical integrity, being musicians making a music documentary is very different. You know, we we really focus on making sure that the music is front and center and that it's edited with integrity. There are a lot of documentaries that just are kind of fast and loose with, is that song really what he's playing right now, you know, and everything. And we're, we're really committed to having absolute integrity with every note that you see on the screen. So, you know, to have people respond in a very emotional way to the film by giving it awards. And even I've had people come up after the film in tears and saying, Oh, that was just such an inspiring story. And it was so beautiful with all that incredible nature photography was surprising to me but um i think it's also a testament to the man dave grusin is the most modest man you'll ever meet and yet he's had an extraordinary career that is absolutely unbelievable so it's inspiring just in that in that it's just a an uplifting story about a jazz musician and um there haven't been very many jazz documentaries that are uplifting positive stories so You interviewed some really interesting people in this film. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that's why the coronavirus has been such a bump in the road for us. I mean, we were on a roll. We were having, you know, we were hanging out at Quincy Jones's house interviewing him and Michael Keaton and Jeff Bridges was coming to our screenings and hanging out because he was in the film. And, you know, it's it. We went to the Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland and we went to a 
you know, film festival in Rome, Italy and won these awards and <laughs> we were on a roll and our biggest festivals were yet to come. I mean, we were going to do the Beverly Hills Festival and uh, the Jazz Film Festival in Copenhagen and all of that is gone now. And so, yeah, it, it was pretty devastating. And really, we weren't ready for this shift you know we were we were still going to ride out and had pay licenses for the music for film festivals for another year and so yeah it's been quite a setback but maybe this is exactly what's supposed to happen oh it is for sure I, i'm curious though what um how are some of the festivals uh reacting to covid19 how are they planning to go ahead are they it's interesting some of them are choosing a virtual route, which gives me a little trepidation as a filmmaker because your film is going out. You know, it's one thing when you go to a festival and it's in a theater and you can see it being screened and you're oftentimes, I mean, we had a condition that we wanted to be at all the festivals where it was screened because we wanted to meet other filmmakers and distributors and the people that were running the festival and watch a lot of films and, and have that experience. This is different. You're sending your film off to a festival and really having to do a tremendous trust exercise that they're going to hold it with integrity and protect it and report to you how many people have seen it. You know, um, there's something about that that makes me a little nervous, you know just that it's going out into the world in multiple places with people that you don't know. And, you know, is it going to be okay? <laughs> Are you going to wake up tomorrow and it's on YouTube for free? <laughs> oh, wouldn't you know? that be terrible? Yeah. How, how, how can people watch your film or not yet? Not yet. Um, it, the best thing is to um, go to our website, grusenfilm.com and you can stay in touch with everything going on there. And also our Facebook page is a really good source of, where and when the film will be released. Um, we're working very hard right now in an accelerated way because of the coronavirus to finish these music licenses for a commercial release. And it's a really complicated process. We have 440 visual images, you know, video clips and photos, and then we've got 65 music cues. And it's just an incredible legal process to get things um you know, releases and licenses in for all of this material. Knowing what you know now about the legal aspect of this, would you have done things a little bit differently? Yeah, I probably will never do another documentary with a lot of commercial music in it. <laughs> 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 because, you know, you're dealing with Universal Music Group and Sony Pictures and, you know, just huge, huge corporations that – you know, a little documentary film is not the highest thing on their priority list. And, and um, so, yeah, it just, it's been a lot of time and energy that I didn't realize I was going to become a legal clearance expert. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's not, I would rather spend my time doing other things, you know, we'll put it that way, but it's necessary and it's been very educational. If you could rewrite this whole COVID experience with your film, would you? You mean have it not happen? Whatever, however you'd like to rewrite it. I don't know if I would rewrite it. I think that th I like to proceed in life as if, you know, everything happens for a reason or at least it's connected to some learning experience. And my, my sense about this is that it's really – um, a great um, opportunity to experience a, a level of detachment and letting go, which um, I think is an important philosophical, um, you know, perspective on life that helps no matter what is going on. And um, using this time for transformation is is how i'm trying to see this you know the things i mentioned earlier what's really important um and simple pleasures and and just trying to be more conscious in every moment i think that's the thing that i'm really experiencing in a beautiful way is that 
I'm trying to do more listening and conscious eating and stretching and meditation and simplifying. I mean, I'm organizing files and and going through my wardrobe and getting rid of things. And I mean, it's kind of funny as you're doing it because you think that's always been there. Like, when was I going to do that? You know, <laughs> clean out that closet or organize those files or my pictures or, you know, it's like, when was I going to do that? You know, and now is the perfect opportunity. And what I am experiencing is tremendous clarity and um, centering and reflection time. A lot of maintenance on the house, you know, where I'm trying to turn it into a little sanctuary since we're probably going to be here. Um, doing a lot of maintenance that hasn't been done. We even bought a fountain, you know, for our deck. And now it's become this little Zen center. And again, these are things that we probably wouldn't have done and getting a lot of pleasure day to day just in the simplicity of that. Trying I to think connect, that, I'm sorry, trying to connect with nature a lot more too. I, I think um, I, I've been through a huge simplification process over the last several years as well. And I think that there's enormous richness and depth and reward in simplicity. Absolutely. Absolutely. If um, you could give some advice to others about how to manage a total upheaval and change in everything in their business, like you guys have been through, what, what advice would you give to somebody? Hmm. You know, for us, like I said, being jazz musicians, it doesn't feel that much different. It's just on a bigger scale, but learning to improvise, you know, and just getting, being not attached to results, letting go of a little ambition. You know, ironically, right after we let go of what we thought we were going to do for the film, we got a phone call from somebody saying, you know, have you ever thought about running for an Academy Award? <laughs> And it's like, no. <laughs> so, um, you know, just the opportunities that come out of just pausing and reflecting and letting go of ambition a little bit and being more open to what the universe may have in store for you that you can't see right now. And maybe these things are coming as a result of being quiet and at home and centered and open as opposed to trying to make it happen, make it happen, make it happen. I don't know if that makes sense. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you found something in today's podcast that inspires you along your own life path because sometimes a bump in the road is actually a portal into a more conscious and meaningful life. Bump in the Road is a production of Cancer Road Trip. Subscribe to the podcast, follow us on social media at Cancer Road Trip, and you can learn more at www.cancerroadtrip.com. Until next time, be safe and be well.